By the way, I've been on the road, and all I do is sit in my hotel room, watch TLC. Anyone else? <laughs> you know when network's good when two shows just got canceled this week because of Christian child molesters. <laughs> Okay, Toddlers and Tiaras, 19 Kids and Counting, Cake Boss, Fabulous Cakes, DC Cupcakes, Hoarders, Buried a Lot. TLC should stand for Toddlers, Lunatics, and Cake. <laughs> it's the only channel we have in this country that's supposed to be dedicated to learning. And it has shows almost exclusively about little people in cake. <laughs> There's this show, My Strange Addiction. Okay. This, you see this one where this girl's like, I can't stop eating toilet paper. <laughs> and then this other girl's like, I can't stop eating dryer sheets. A good place to sneak in dryer sheets is the movie theater. I'm like, it's not illegal to eat dryer sheets, ma'am. You can just walk on in with those. The best one I saw though, there was this girl. Okay, her name was Charmisa. And you know her parents meant to call her Charisma. <laughs> but they spelled it wrong. So now she's going by Charmisa. This girl, probably because her name's a birth certificate typo, she is now addicted to eating her couch. So her roommates leave, she gets on the floor, unzips the cushion, and just starts eating the foam. And TLC must think we're so stupid. They're like, these are dangerous addictions that should not be attempted at home. She's eating her couch. Charmisa has been addicted to cushion for over three years. Over the course of her addiction, she's eaten 29 chairs, a bunk bed, and a settee. I would rather be under a bridge injecting heroin into my face than be addicted to cushion. Please, man, I'll suck your dick for a futon. Oh, yeah. This is what we're addicted to? And then right after that is a show called Freaky Eaters. This girl's like, I'm addicted to cheesy potatoes. Uh, everyone's addicted to cheesy potatoes. They're good. I could have told you you were addicted to cheesy potatoes 240 pounds ago. This woman has eaten nothing but cheesy potatoes for two decades. Somehow, she has a husband. And so, her intervention is he's frying her up some broccoli. So he's trying to get her to eat broccoli. And then he tries to feed it to her, and she's just like, oh, 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 oh. And she collapses on the floor. And then they always bring in like these fake like therapists, a food trauma therapist, Sunrise Stevens. It's like always a fake name. So she goes and like, picks this girl up off the floor. She's like, oh, I've got a surprise for you. And she takes her outside to their like cul-de-sac and all of a sudden, this dump truck starts coming towards them full of potatoes and they dump them on her head. And then the woman's like, what do you want to say to the potatoes? And she's like, put some cheese on no! All these dudes, no one wants to grow up. There's like these hipsters, so many hipsters in LA. You know these guys, they'll be like 40 years old, wearing a flamingo onesie, and like carrying around an old fashioned typewriter. They got a monocle, just like looking for pussy. Like, they're like calculated bros. Sorry if I'm calling you out, guys, but it's like, They've all figured out girls don't want to fuck Polly D. They want to fuck someone who looks like David Koresh. So they've all like growing these like long beards like they think they're Ernest Hemingway. If Ernest Hemingway were alive, he would beat the shit out of every hipster. There would just... There would just be trails of bloody hipsters outside every artisanal coffee shop and beard waxing facility. You know these people I'm talking about, like people who have to wear their coolness? Like, not me, I have style, that's different. But like, you see these guys, they'll have like, like Mork and Mindy suspenders and like a tattoo of a parallelogram. And they like, can't light a pilot light. They can barely wave, they're like, hey, I'm Beowulf. Okay, nobody's named that. Hey, I'm Nathaniel. 
Okay, uh, I'm sure your parents named you Nathan. In college, you were probably called Nate Dog. <laughs> Nathaniel, that's like the name of a ghost. <laughs> Not an emaciated barista with a Mr. Pringles mustache and a <laughs> gluten sensitivity. Why do only hipsters get gluten allergies? Are they activated by American apparel purchases? I was talking to my friend, he was like 38, barely ready for pet ownership. We're having coffee, he doesn't have a job. And he was like, I think I'm gonna get into pickling. You should get into employment. These are the guys you're supposed to procreate with. This is the guy I'm gonna trust to be the sperm donor to the Asian surrogate that's gonna carry my child. That is a big decision in a gal's life. So I am getting married, thank you. I never wanted... I never really wanted to get married. I definitely didn't want to get married. I, like, I don't want to have a wedding. I don't want to do vows. I just want to do concerns. <laughs> I have a few concerns. Um, first one, how attached are you to this Burning Man tradition? <laughs> Do you guys know what Burning Man is? It's like, it's a great place to go breastfeed your pet ferret. Um, and he really wants me to go. I mean, if I wanted to be a part of a dysfunctional community of white people in the desert, I'd move to Arizona. There's no showers. I need two baths a day. I know there's a drought happening. Maybe my two baths will mean people in Barstow don't get bagels, but you know what? Something I have learned to deal with. My friends will like, my friends will go to Burning Man. They're like, I go there to meet dudes. Okay, if I wanted to have sex with some creepy dude in goggles, I'd stay home and fuck a welder. <laughs> At least then I wouldn't have to listen to didgeridoo solos in between <laughs> orgasms. Like these, I'm sorry if anyone here is really into Burning Man, but just like, I've never been. I've never been, and I hate it, but like... Because <laughs> you see these people talking, like I heard this guy bragging, he was like, he goes to Burning Man every year, he's like, yeah, my kid doesn't have a birth... Oh, because they're all, this is what I have to say, they're all obsessed with being off the grid. You know, like they don't want to be a part of like society. So I heard this guy bragging, he's like, yeah, my kid doesn't have a birth certificate or a social security number. I'm like, oh, really? Well, I wonder who in 50 years is going to be doing yard work for middle-class Latino families. <laughs> the way I shop is different now because of technology. Like, I used to go to stores and, like, compare prices and try things on and maybe go back and get something. Now here's what I do. I sit in my house, I'll smoke a little pot, I'll dream something up, like, I need a gold stapler. <laughs> and then the next day, someone throws it over the fence. I'm like, I was just kidding. <laughs> you can get as specific as you want. Like, I want a cornflower blue kimono. And then it just comes, that is not a good way to shop. <laughs> What's gonna happen to us? I recently dislocated my shoulder. Don't worry, I won't talk about it long. <laughs> Nobody cares about your pain, I know. Whenever I want someone to stop talking to me, I'm like, ugh, I start talking about my rotator cuff. <laughs> But here's what I don't understand. I'll go online to try to like get some solace. So I'll like be online, like what are some of the best exercises? Who are on these Yahoo answer boards? They're just giving paragraphs of information. Like you'll see these people like, well, I've never dislocated my shoulder personally, but about three years ago, a friend of mine at the office dislocated his shoulder. It's like, how do you have time to be on this website? You got a password? You filled in a CAPTCHA? Like, I work 30 days a year and I can barely handle life. <laughs> There's just like so much pressure to keep up with all of this and none of it matters. And I just have to keep looking at the same celebrities. Madonna's been spreading open her legs since I was in seventh grade. <laughs> J-Lo in her butt. Like it's just like, do you know how many times a day I have to look at J-Lo's ass? It just comes into my feed. I don't care about J-Lo's ass. J-Lo looks like a lion who works at Sephora. Like, what? 